Hey everyone, it's Kevin here again. Uh, today we're going to go over some API basics. Uh, API is an application programming interface. So to start off, we want to open up Visual Studio 2022, create a new project. We're going to click on, we have a couple options here. So not this one, we want this one, ASP.NET Core Web, a Web API, not Web App. So I'm going to get rid of this here from the list. We're going to have a couple options here, so just look through it. Make sure it's the API, not app, and uh, make sure it's not empty. So, even ju just to make it even more straightforward, ASP.NET API, right there. That one right there, that's the little icon that it has. Click on that one, name this, well, you can name it whatever you choose. If you're following along with the lecture, I'm going to choose to name it Test API. Click Next, leave everything default, .NET 6.0. Let it create. So this should be a pretty familiar screen. We can go on our controllers here, open up our weather forecasting controller, and this should be identical to what you all created in your week one assignment. So I'm going to go ahead and rename this here to main API. And yes, we do want to rename all of the references in the project. So now that this here is done, what we can tell from here right away, I'm, I'm going to get rid of some of this here stuff because we don't actually need any of this. And we don't need this iLogger. We don't need this read only. So this is our controller right here. So this is basically the parent of the route. So if we think about our APIs, or if we think of a typical web page, it's uh, the, the URL, the base URL, and then it's a forward slash, and then what comes after that, that's the route, the controller. So this is automatically named, it's pulled off of this here. So this route is the main API route, and right here is a get route. It's the get route that gets connected to this. So we're going to want to use a post route, HTTP post, rename this to uh, int list work, it can be named whatever you'd like. And we don't want an IA enumerable. So all an IA enumerable is, is it's a, it's a data type where you can enumerate through it. So an IA enumerable takes a parameter and it can be like a parameter of type object or of type list, of, which is of type, which can be of type object or of type primitive. So, just an example: i enumerable of type list of type uh, int. That's valid. Or of type string. Or we could create an object, which we will get to in a future video or future lecture, I should say. Uh, so, public item probably would help if I was outside of this class so we can go ahead and make it out here go class item and then it can have a couple properties as you can tell us right there our IntelliSense is pretty nice or auto code auto completion is pretty nice, and it can be it can return uh, an I enumerable of type item or of type list, which can be of type item. If that makes sense. So we're not going to work with this quite yet. That'll be for like I said a future date. So what we're going to want to return though is it's going to be an action result used typically with uh, HTTP uh, responses. Get rid of that. There we go. Action result of type list of type string. Primitive string. And right away we're going to want to or create a new list here. So list type string Auto completion is pretty nice once again, so we can just call this S list. 
And right away we can return this list. Within our int list work, we're going to take in a, a parameter right here. It's going to be a list of type int. And we're going to call this lint, list of type int. So within here, we can we're going to want to, we're going to want to create a couple variables. So a double sum, and it's just give that a value, initialize it basically. Double counter. and a double mean. So we can create these, we can have these be integers, but I'll just have them be doubles to avoid any any sort of issue with calculating the mean. So for each, and this, once again, the code auto completion is really nice, and it's another one of the big reasons that I chose Visual Studio 2022 over 2019. So I'll just type some of it out for, for each. And I in lint. And within here, right away, we're going to want to increment our counter. So counter. And then our, what else are we going to want to increment? Our sum is going to need to be incremented by this integer. And then we're going to want to calculate our mean. So our mean is equal to our sum over our counter. And what we can do here is we're going to start adding some values to this list. So we're going to take our list. We're going to add to this list, list of type string. We're going to add our counter. And then we're going to add a little bit of information here. Current mean. Then after that, we're going to want to add our mean. And we can just try this here out. See how this runs. Let's click, oh, and this is not going to compile because our logger does not exist in this context. So we shouldn't need this here constructor. And I do realize that I left this to get weather forecast, but it shouldn't make a difference. So if we look right here, right away we can tell that we can use Swagger or Swagger UI for testing our API. So I click here, click try it out. We can go ahead and add 255, 1000, 40, And we can execute this here, get a response. So this is the mean as it's getting calculated, as it goes through each one of these elements, which looks good. And this works all right, but personally I do prefer Postman, and I'll, I'll go over why I prefer Postman. So I'm just gonna leave this here, open Postman. So what can Postman be used for? Well, Postman can be used for testing APIs. So right here, this is for an old class that I that I uh, did teach last semester. We can have collections here. So these collections have some stored routes. These stored routes can store. Uh, oops, I want to keep that like that. They can store this uh, uh, this request body that we're going to pass into this route. They can store uh, variables. So if we look into our environments, we could add global variables. And you might be thinking, well, what am I going to, what kind of variable am I going to need to store and reuse throughout API testing? Well, this base URL is subject to change, so you can store that base URL. You can also store some security tokens, because that's also necessary for accessing some APIs. So instead of retyping that each time, we can just use security tokens, or we can store those variables in globals. So to start off, I'm just going to go ahead and create a new, not a new environment. We don't need one of those. Not one of those. We'll go to our history, create a new HTTP request. And how are we going to know what the request URL is? Well, we can go back to our Swagger UI. 
take this here. And go to our postman. Add that right there. And if we th think back to what we were working on, we stop this here process. The name of this controller is main API. So we're going to do main API. And we have the option of a get or a post route. So we're going to do a post route. And in this body, we're going to select raw of type uh, JavaScript, or JSON, I'm sorry. And since it's going to be a list, we're just going to pass in a list like this with these instead of these, which would be more of a uh, mm -hmm. object type. This is for a list of square brackets. We're going to pass in a couple integers, so one, two, three, four, five. We're going to try to make a post call to this API, and it's not going to work because the API is not running, so we can add, let me start this here up. Let it start up. Go back to Postman. Send that request once again, and that looks pretty good. So I think that this is a lot better to work with. We also have our history, so we can go back to old uh, API calls that we've made. So that's just the basics of Postman. That's, and that, those are the reasons that I like to use Postman. I do use these in the professional world. I, or this here software. I use this software in the professional world. So what we're going to do now is we're going to log our sum. So not log. Right line our sum. And we can also add in a string here, sum. There we go. So if we want to make a change to the API while it's running, we can go ahead and restart right here. And the changes will be reflected. So now if we try sending that same request, we're going to send the request. Looks good. We look at our, which one of these would it be? that one or that one this is the current one that's running 93 so localhost 93 localhost 93 print sum is 15 if we try sending it some more values try sending that now the sum is 92 so we can still log our values that's where the log that's where the uh, log values would be would be stored so what else can we do within this API? Well, we can do anything that we would do to a uh, anything that we would do to a inside of another function, any other function. So what we can do here is we can take our lint and set that equal to lint dot uh, sort. So now the list will be sorted. And what are we doing here? And honestly, I think I might be able to just call this here function, maybe. Yeah, I can just call the function. So now the list will be sorted. And if we go through here, do our operations, to save here just so that we don't lose any of our changes, we can break through all of our changes here. So I'm just going to go over that also as well. So set a breakpoint, restart. And this is just going to be to test to see if this will uh, sort it. So why don't we try to send a request to that. Hits our breakpoint. Within here we have access to all of our locals. So if we look at our, we look at this list of type int. Look through it. That looks pretty sorted to me. But did we pass in? Yeah, we passed it in. A, we passed it in. Um, what do you call it? The list sorted already so I'm just gonna go ahead and continue this let it do its thing and I'm gonna pass in some other values without without them being in order so one zero sixty ten thousand try sending it that request and our mean does change and it looks like it changes in order so if, you, if we uh, think back to what we were doing originally, we were looping through this here list, 
And depending on the order, that's what the mean would be. So if we started off with taking this element into consideration, 1,000 over the current element, the mean would be pretty high. So if we go back to our test API, we set a breakpoint, and we can check get this breakpoint, send that request once again. We look into our list of type int, and that looks pretty in order to me right there. So that was just the basics with the post route. We can do a get route as well and pass in the, uh, these values through the query, through the query parameters, query string parameters, I believe that's the proper name to call them. So if we go back to test API, we're gonna hit continue on here. And we can, we can add some parameters here. And it's th this is another pretty neat feature of the uh, of Postman. You can have the key be uh, var1, the value of var1 be 40, 40. And if we look here, it adds it right onto the end of the URL. So once again, if you think back to your server-side programming, which should have been PHP, that's it should have been how you were uh, sending some data to get routes. And if you try to access a route that has not been created, you're going to get an issue, or you should, right there, 4 or 5 method not allowed, so it's just not supported. We currently don't have a get route declared here, and most of our routes are going to be post. The reason that they're going to be post is just because it's more secure. Clearly it's going to be more secure, because if we think about it, this data is visible in the URL, so if we're passing password data through uh, URL, it's more than likely not going to be hidden from the users. and the users aren't too much of a concern. It's more the people that are that have bad intentions. But it's it's going to be a lot more secure if we choose to use uh, post routes, especially for any sort of authentication or any sort of routes where we pass in sensitive information between routes and between APIs. So that's why I choose to use gets. There is a whole bunch of other uh, routes that we can choose methods, I should say. So deletes, patches, puts. But I I just choose to stick to get and post. They're the most straightforward ones. So that's uh, really the basics of it. There's not much to add on to here. We're going to keep uh, expanding this. So we're going to work on objects, so creating some objects. And in the world of APIs, typically they're known as models. So that, that class that I created earlier, that would be known as like an item model. And that item model has some properties. And those properties can be uh, worked with with those uh, getters and setters that C-sharp takes care of. You can just set those values and access those values if they're public within the API, which is pretty neat. And we'll uh, work with that a little bit in the future. We'll also work with uh, testing this. So these breakpoints that I did use, it's, it's pretty basic. There's more that we can do. We can also work on these. We can work with these diagnostic tools, which can be pretty beneficial. But for this week, that should be it. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to uh, send me a message on Discord. And if you like the video, just uh, you leave a comment or it, it'll help. It helps me because I can take uh, those suggestions and take them into consideration for future videos. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, send me a message on Discord and uh, have a good one.